Have you ever wondered about the creatures that lurk in the deepest depths of the ocean? Well, so does Dr. Alan Jameson and Dr. Thomas Lindley, both professors at Newcastle University in the UK. They were part of a team that included 40 researchers total, recruited from 17 countries, who took a ship out to the eastern rim of the Pacific Ocean, right along the western coast of South America. Here, they floated directly above the Atacama Trench, which is an immensely deep rift that's been created as the Nazca Plate moves eastward and subducts underneath the South American Plate. In addition to creating the Atacama Trench, this tectonic subduction has also created the Andes Mountains. The researchers were out here to unreal some audio-visual equipment in a protected cage down into the darkness of the Atacama Trenches. Specifically, they were in a region called the Hadal Trenches, and even more specifically, the coolest discoveries I want to talk about today were made in a particular trench called Richard's Deep, which was the deepest trench out of every one that they sampled. The cage structure was mounted with an apparatus that held an impaled fish body right in front of the camera. This would guarantee direct images of any deep-sea scavengers in action. The entire journey involved 27 different camera drops, which produced more than 100 hours of video and 11,500 photographs. When they floated above Richard's Deep, the camera descended to around 7 to 8,000 meters below the surface, where it began capturing video of a surprisingly diverse and active biome. The bait fish was quickly covered in all manner of organisms, greedily fighting for a chance to bite off some of the flesh before it was all gone. Many of these creatures were no larger than a finger, plump and soft and wriggling across the corpse like large, fleshy-colored aquatic maggots. Other organisms were larger, with pale, silky bodies that seemed to be devoid of scales, and they had fins that were so soft they almost looked ghostly as they waved through the water. These larger, ghostly-looking fish belong to the family of snailfish called Leparidaea, on this one dive, they discovered three new species of these snailfish, which they've given the placeholder names pink, purple, and blue Atacama snailfish. Dr. Thomas Lindley described them, saying, quote, There is something about this snailfish that allows them to adapt to living very deep. Beyond the reach of other fish, they are free of competitors and predators. As the footage clearly shows, there are lots of invertebrate prey down there, and the snailfish are the top predator. They seem to be quite active and look very well fed. Their gelatinous structure means that they're perfectly adapted to living at extreme pressure, and in fact, the hardest structures in their bodies are the bones in their inner ear which give them balance, and their teeth. Without the extreme pressure and cold to support their bodies, they are extremely fragile and melt rapidly when brought to the surface." Unquote. Despite their relative fragility, the team was able to capture a healthy specimen and preserve it in such a way that it can be studied back up on the surface. At the time of this recording, the research is going on right now. In addition to the discovery of three new snailfish species, they also captured footage of a frustratingly rare type of isopod called munopsids. These weird, deep-sea crustaceans have disproportionately long, thin legs for their tiny, yet bulbous bodies. Dr. Lindley said, and I quote, We don't know what species of munipsid these are, but it's incredible to have caught them in action in their natural habitat, especially the flip they do as they switch from swimming to walking mode, unquote. This flip that he's talking about is the observed behavior of the munopsids, where they seem to swim backwards, with their body oriented upside down. They have little paddles on their stomach, and they use these paddles for propulsion when they're, when they're moving like this. But when it wants to hunker down on the seabed to eat, it flips itself upright and lands with its stomach against the ground. That's some weird stuff, but it's also really cool. And I hope we get to see more deep sea footage like this in the future. Considering Newcastle University is pumping a lot of money and man hours into optimizing deep sea recording and sampling techniques, I think we can be optimistic. Yeah.